Welcome to another episode of Dirt to Dust brought to you by Outlaw Off-Road. I'm your host, Caleb Forbes, and today is another Friday mailbag episode. Now, it looks like I'm all alone, and that's because I am. Uh, Doug and I traded places these last two weeks. Last week, you had Doug Solo. I was in Nashville doing some filming for our Outlaw Off-Road Nashville store. Uh, this week, you just get me. Uh, luckily, it's a quick episode. So if you like Doug's a little bit better and you like the co- commentary back and forth, we'll be right back on next week, just like normal. Now, I do have a great question for you guys today. Uh, it's actually a message uh, sent into one of our outlaw locations. Um, and I was able to break that into three questions, which is our normal mailbag episode. So without further ado, let's get right into it. When other people see dirt, you see glory and when you see a vehicle for the first time your first thought is not how pretty it is but how much abuse can it take this is dirt to dust presented by outlaw off-road if it's anything off-road and dirty we probably like it and we're probably talking about it you'll get industry info tech talk and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry let's do it this is dirt to dust and now your hosts doug langford and caleb forbes like i said welcome back guys so one of our favorite things that we get to do, uh, especially for the the Friday mailbag episodes, is we get to see comments and messages and everything that you guys send in through multiple different channels. And we try to answer those the best we can. And that is definitely the case in today's episode. Uh, this was a customer that messaged into one of our outlaw locations. Um, they had kind of a series of questions and just wanted some answers. But I thought I was like, this is this is something that most people normally have questions about when they're getting into off-roading. And uh, what what a better way to answer than uh, to do it live here. So like I said, this came into one of our outlaw locations and uh, that is I'm new to Jeeps and off-roading. I really want to get into more into it. And I just bought a new Wrangler. I have a few questions. I have an all I had an all-wheel drive tell you ride previously. And I only had it on dirt and gravel roads in the North Carolina mountains. What's the difference between all wheel drive and four wheel drive? And when do I change from two wheel drive to four wheel drive auto four high or four low? Also, what are some great beginner mods I need to go off road? So like I said, I wanted to break this down into kind of three questions. Um, What's the difference between all wheel drive and four wheel drive? When to use two wheel drive, four wheel drive and um, four low? And uh, last but not least, what are some great mods? So let's get right into it. Um, If you Google the difference between all-wheel drive and selectable four-wheel drive, you get a very vague generic response. It goes something like this. I'm going to read it kind of robotic on purpose. But all-wheel drives are a system that's always active and automatically share torque among the axles when low traction conditions are detected. While four-wheel drive systems are part-time and need to be engaged by the driver. Cool. Cool. What does that actually mean for normal people that, you know, have real world world applications? Um, For most people in the off-road world, when you're thinking about trail riding and trail conditions, where Jeeps go, where trucks go, a little bit more than your just a normal gravel path. um, This means you have less control over when and how that torque is applied to the tires um, or what conditions that your vehicle finds it necessary um, usually it's, it's an automatic system. It's it's calibrated by computers and it's calibrated by wheel and tire slip and traction. So let's say you have uh, you have some snowy or wet, muddy conditions. Um, and typically that's a front wheel drive vehicle. You have one tire spinning in the front, but the other tire is is has traction. And you have maybe one tire in the back that has traction and one tire that's loose. It's automatically going to apply torque to those tires that have traction and take away from the tires that have that are just spinning um and what this does is multiply the torque where it needs to go and, but again this is an automatic system and the computer is doing all the thinking for you and the minute it feels like it has traction it's going to turn that system off and then you might be stuck again um now in newer vehicles this has become a very intelligent system um that usually works the best in like snow or wet weather 
uh, in areas that you, you probably don't need a true four wheel drive. So you're, you're talking mountainous cities uh, or, or places that get just heavy, heavy rain that you just need a little bit of help getting through. But this isn't built for a trail or to go truly off roading. You've got a couple different components in that system. It's not a true transfer case. So it's not strong or re- robust enough to like really handle bigger tires, heavier tires. Um, the CV axles usually are not built to withstand a lot of force. It's just enough to keep that vehicle moving. <clears throat> so with that, an all-wheel drive vehicle is not the best for trail riding. So I'm glad you uh, you you got a new vehicle. You got a Wrangler. It sounds great. Uh, glad to introduce you into the world of off-roading. So hopefully that, that explains the difference between all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive is going to be fully selectable. And you're going to have your choice of whether you want to manually put it in two wheel drive. And now there's four high auto, which we'll get into that here in a second, four high full time and then four low. Um, and we'll get into those things as well. So when do you use four high auto, four high and four low? So for normal daily conditions, two wheel drive is what you need to be in. Um, this only engages the drive axle. Um, so it's less stress on the components. And if you're on pavement on on normal conditions, nine times out of 10, you're never going to need four wheel drive. Um, That two wheel drive is great. It's going to save you a little bit of gas um, and keep you going there. So for most normal applications, 99.9% of the time, I would say two wheel drive. You're absolutely good. Now, four high auto is a relatively new system. Um, It's kind of like an all wheel drive system. It's intelligently figuring out when you need four wheel drive. Now, the benefit of this in a Jeep is that you actually have a transfer case and a front axle. So that system is a lot stronger. Obviously you can upgrade tires. That system is prepared for full-time four wheel drive use. Uh, It's just doing it in a smart, intelligent way. Uh, Some vehicles like the 392 Grand Cherokees and a couple other models actually are full-time auto four wheel drive from the factory, meaning you can't put it in two wheel drive. It's full-time selectable four wheel drive. Um, but it's intelligently deciding what to do. Now, the difference is with a that that kind of system versus an all-wheel drive system, you can manually select and close into a four high or a four low. So four high, we can use them in the same scenarios before, wet conditions, gravel conditions, uh, snow, but this is going to fully engage the front axle full time. And until you put it back into two wheel drive or turn it off, um, you're locked into that four wheel drive. So anything that you need at a higher rate of speed. So think sand, higher, faster gravel roads, uh, light off roading, but anything that you just need to get through a little bit quicker that you don't need a crawling torque ratio to get you through. Um, that's what that four high is there for. Um, you can, engage it just about at any speed. I would say under 65 miles an hour is probably the safe. You, typically, you don't want to go too fast and try to engage four-wheel drive. You might mess something up. But for most conditions that you're going to need four-wheel drive in, you're not going to be going over 65 miles an hour anyways. So feel free to just pull that lever back into four-wheel drive high and you're there. Um, that's not going to hurt anything. You can do it on the fly. And like I said, for faster stuff, beach driving, anything like that, you need a little bit more wheel speed. That's going to be your go-to. Now, for low, this is the fun one. This is where you're in a situation that you need some serious torque to those tires. So for low, especially in a Jeep, you're going to slow down below five miles an hour, I think. Uh, Put it in neutral in your transmission and then drop the transfer case down into for low. Keep moving a little bit so everything meshes and and turns smoothly. But you're going to notice when you put it back in drive, it's going to be very, 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 very slow. And that's on purpose. That system is designed to multiply torque to all four tires in the lowest gear range possible. So think you're crawling up a rock or you are in some heavy mud or some very loose traction that you really just need to all four tires to spin slowly, but have as much grip and control as possible. That is what four low is for. Now, do not run four wheel drive four low uh, over 15 miles an hour. Again, it's made to go slow. Um, over revving that, you'll notice that your RPMs are really high even when you're going really slow. And that's because that engine is diverting all that torque down low. Um, now, 
for most Jeepers, this means we're about to have fun. Put it in four low and let's go. Uh, so rocks, trails, heavy off-roading, anything that that you really need some uh, some control and stability over and, and really need that grip down low, that's exactly what that's for. Now, switching out of four low, you want to do kind of the opposite. Slow back down, stay moving under five miles an hour, um, put it back in neutral, and then you're going to shift back to four high or two-wheel drive or whatever you need from there. And um, yeah, and depending on what situation you're in uh, or what kind of terrain you're on, um, you'll be able to figure that out pretty quickly of, of when four wheel high stops working and when four low kind of excels. So hopefully that kind of gives you a brief understanding of when to use those things. And if so, I mean, hopefully we can get out and do a video this year of uh, doing this in application and showing you exactly being on the trail and uh, kind of doing an episode on the Outlaw Off-Road channel of, of how to and when to use those things. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure we'll probably do that at some point. And to answer your last question, what are some beginner mods um, to get you off-road? Use it. Uh, Wranglers are, and Gladiators and most modern four-wheel drive vehicles are incredibly capable off-road. And Wranglers and Gladiators especially, you don't really need anything to start going off-road. Um, you have the four-wheel drive system. You have everything you need. Um, I would say maybe you look at a decent set of all-terrain tires. Um, 35s can be put on extremely easily with a very small lift. Uh, if you have a Rubicon model of either of those two, you actually have higher fender flares that can fit 35s from the factory. You don't even need a lift kit. Uh, and a 35 inch tall tire and the right amount of ground clearance can easily cover, I would probably say 90% of the off-road trails in the United States. But like I said, the easiest thing to do is to go use it, go get on the trail and see what you're comfortable with and see what you like and don't like. It's not for everybody. I will say that. Um, some people just get really, really nervous and, and kind of agitated when they're off-road. Some people that find it as their happy place. So you got to figure out what you like and what you don't like or what you're comfortable with doing. Um, 35s, like I said, are a super easy modification to do. Most of the time, it just requires a leveling kit, small lift kit, um, and then your tires. Uh, from there, I would maybe recommend doing some kind of steel bumper and recovery gear, maybe a winch, just so you're a little bit more self-sufficient. Um, I do always recommend going out with some friends so you're not always by yourself. That can put you in kind of a, a rough situation. But you do want to be self-sustainable regardless of how many people you're with. So a winch, some good recovery gear at minimum, um, maybe a safety bag or a first aid kit. Those are some things to have on you. And actually, I think what would be really cool is if we do an episode of everything you should have on you when you go off road. Um, and that's for another time, but that's not really a modification. That's just things, general advice to bring um, back to the modification side, maybe some rock sliders or skid plates to protect your body panels or your undercarriage from rocks or anything that you might go on. Very frequently, we decide to go on a trail and realize that the trail might be a little bit harder than we thought or might have more jagged rocks. Um, and if you just bought your vehicle, you don't want to mess that up. Um, it's one of those things that you kind of see it as an investment for a little while until you do some heavier off-roading or you're dumb like I am and decide to start cutting up things for major, major, major modifications. But that's for like not even driving on the road anymore. That's strictly trail use. Um, but yeah, so those are the three things that I would add first, um, just to kind of get you there. But first and foremost, your Jeep is extremely capable right off the factory floor. So go use it, have some fun. And I hope those answered your questions. Uh, we would love to have some more questions. So we are on YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, and we would greatly appreciate it if you dropped us a comment and, uh, ask a question of your own. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe any of those channels uh, give us a good rating if that is available. Uh, we love seeing interaction with you guys and we definitely appreciate it. We cannot do the show without <clears throat> customer interaction and getting those questions in and, um, and you guys watching and paying attention. So we definitely appreciate it. But like I said, today's kind of a short episode. I just wanted to get in here and answer those quick questions. Next week, we're going to have Doug back on and Doug and I will have our normal show. Uh, long form content. Uh, we're going to try to start getting these out in the morning so it'll accommodate your morning drives and uh, just so have something to listen to first thing as you go. 
But from here, I'm signing off. It's been great talking to you. See you next week. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.